If you haven't seen the Book of Kells, this might actually be a useful video for you because I'm going to try to talk about something that's visually interesting about this movie. If you have seen The Secret of Kells, then you know what I'm talking about. This movie has a visual style that evokes um, medieval artwork, particularly the Book of Kells, which is a central plot point in the movie. That's not a spoiler. And what's really remarkable about it is that it somehow manages to weave that art style into its presentation. And by that, I mean that the animators use the flatness of the art style to great effect. When the characters are out in the woods, there is a sense of it being a large space, but because everything's kind of flattened, it creates a sense of uh, claustrophobia. Same thing within the um, uh, area in, in the monastery, that because everything is flattened, everything feels much more closed in than it would if you had traditional depth. Now, I do a lot of anime videos on this channel, and there is kind of an anime relation here, at least a Japanese art one. The art style in The Secret of Kells is actually quite similar to an art style called Super Flat, created and popularized by artist Takashi Murakami. And the idea behind Super Flat is indeed this exact flattening of everything into basically one plane. There's very little sense of depth in Super Flat artwork, and it's meant to be a commentary on both the artificiality of art and animation and, and such, and the visual medium, um, but it's also a legitimate exploration of um, depth and of the relation of different objects to each other. Now, I don't know if the folks behind The Secret of Kells have any experience with Takashi Murakami, but what's impressive to me is how The Secret of Kells animation does a lot of the same things that Murakami does in Superflat. It is something of a commentary on um, art, on what art does to us, on the importance of visual communication, both in the movie itself and also in the plot of the movie. The plot itself is about art and art as communication. Um, it's also interesting because the movie is about more than that. It's about, there, there's a depth of story and a depth of complexity around mythology that comes across in this that Superflat often um, also tries to be. So Superflat tries to be more than just, here's pop art, you know, here are a bunch of round, cute characters. There are layers to Superflat, ironically, that's kind of part of the point, and there are layers to The Secret of Kells. Um, for example, there are strange forces out in the wilderness that don't really align with the main character's um, beliefs and viewpoints, but they are there. And you just kind of have to deal with that, right? Um, this is not a movie about simple lines, ironically, even though it is a movie with simple lines. Again, this is, it's why The Secret of Kells impresses me, because it does a lot with what it is doing. Ironically, by um, simplifying its art style in the sense of lines and depth, it adds layers and complexity to the movie itself. And it also kind of helps you think. This is the thing about animation and art in general. Um, as you simplify a character design or as you simplify an object visually, it tends to make it more universal. If I show you a simple image of a sword, that is more recognizable um, around the world and generally has more visual punch to people than if it looks exactly like Excalibur or exactly like a Japanese katana or what have you. The more specific it is, the more specific it is to a culture. Um, and because The Secret of Kells does have this style, and again, the style is very much reminiscent and very much based on a very specific cultural art style, but because that is stylized, because it doesn't look like Disney or Pixar or what have you, it allows us to imagine ourselves as those characters. It 
makes them universal. Um, it makes them relatable in a way they wouldn't if it was like, no, this is that specific person, right, that I'm looking at. Um, I can imagine myself more as these characters than if they were more realistically represented, uh, which gets back to the whole idea of, of flatness, if you will. So that's it. I'm not building to some massive, you know, theory about all of this. I just wanted to point out some things that I think are really impressive about the movie and that maybe you thought of or hopefully deepens your appreciation. So if you haven't seen the movie, hopefully that gives you some more information and um, drives you in one direction or another. And if you have seen the movie, dang, right? <laughs>